Hey, welcome to another episode of How to Do Atkins Low Car. My name is, of course, Kent Altena, and this week's episode is a misconception series. One of my critics had said that, you know, the failure rate or the adherence rate of a low carb diet is far exceeded by a low fat or a, or a diet in moderation. So I thought that as a takeaway, I would take a look at some of the scientific studies that have been released and see what the actual data is. Do low carbers on studies, are they worse off or is their adherence rate far worse than low fat followers or Mediterranean diet followers? And so I looked at um, a majority of the uh, long term studies that were out there, those that were usually between six months and 12 months and 24 months, and decided who was the most, ad who followed the diet more closely. And um, for my benefit, there was a uh, diet that did a, a meta-analysis of all the randomized controlled trials between low-carb and low-fat diets, and they posted the result study. So let me go down the list of the ones that they had tracked. This meta-analysis came out in 2006, so they focused on a lot of the diets that come, a lot of the studies that they came out in 2003 and 2004 and 2005. So the first one was a randomized trial comparing a very low carbohydrate diet and a calorie restricted low fat diet on um, body weight and cardiovascular risk factors in uh, healthy women and that came out in 2003. Uh, the adherence rate or the completion rate for the low carb followers was 85%. For the low fat followers it was only 74%. So the low carb followers were more adherent. Let's go to the next one. A randomized trial of low carbohydrate diets for obesity in the New England Journal of Medicine, 2003. The adherence rate or the completion rate for low carb followers was 61%. The low fat followers was only 57%. Ding, ding. Low carb wins again. Uh, the next one. A low carbohydrate diet as compared to a low fat diet in severe obesity. Uh, another one by the New England Journal of Medicine, 2003. And in this one, the adherence rate for low-carb followers, 69%. Low-fat followers, only 63%. Next one. Uh, it was an, one produced by Eric Westman, and it was called a low-carbohydrate ketogenic diet versus a low-fat diet, low diet to treat obesity and hyperlipidemia. And that was produced by in the um, Annuals of Internal Medicine in 2004. The low-carb Carbohydrate diets, 76%. Low-fat diets, only 57%. And then finally, they listed the comparison of the Atkins, Ornish, Weight Watchers, and Zone diets for weight loss and heart disease risk factors um, in women. And that one was produced in the Journal of, um, Journal of um, uh, American Medicine and in 2005. And the low-fat diets were 50%. And the low Carbohydrate diets were 52%. So in each of these diets, and in each of these randomized trials, the low carbohydrate diets um, had a greater adherence or greater completion rate than the low fat diet. So let's take this a little step farther. Obviously, we have the most the most widely known um, diet that's been reduced in the Journal of American Medicine uh, back in 2008, the one that they did the 24 month study. Uh, against the low-carbohydrate, Mediterranean, and low-fat diet. And while the overall adherence rate for this diet was 95% at 12 months and only 84% at, at 24 months, in this case, the low-carbohydrate followers had the lowest adherence rate. But was it far exceeded by the low-fat followers? Well, the low-fat had 90.4% 90 90 for the low-fat group, and the Mediterranean group had 85.3%. Low carbohydrate, 78%. So it was exceeded by 12% of the low fat and by 7% in the Mediterranean diet. But is that far exceeded? I don't think so. Let's do a few more. Uh, low carbohydrate diet and type 2 diabetes, stable improvement of body weight and glycemic control after 44 months. Not only in this, I mentioned this one in my diabetes study, but not only did the low carbohydrate diets, dieters on this um, diabetics show better improvement and greater adherence to the low carbohydrate diets, the control group 
kept having people who switch over to the low carbohydrate diets because they kept seeing the improvements over there. Seven of the 15 control groups switched to the 20% low carbohydrate diet immediately after the six month follow up period. And for those after, the, after that, three additional ones. So 10 of the 15%, 67% of the control group over the course of the diet switched from the low fat control group over to a low carbohydrate group. I can't say that I disagree with them because of the problems that the remaining people had, i.e. four of the five people had heart attacks on the low fat diet. I've talked about that in diabetics. So when you're in a control group that over 80% of the people are, are having severe heart attack events, I can see why they're hopping over to the low carbohydrate group. And here I'll just do one more. Uh, effects of the low carbohydrate diet on the glycemic control of outpatients of severe type 2 diabetics. This one was produced in the uh, Nutrition Metabolism magazine in 2009. And in the six month study, 31 out of 33 patients were able to complete it on the low carbohydrate diet, i.e., over 94% completed the study on the low carbohydrate diet. Pretty decent adherence rate. Okay, so obviously we've talked about the adherence rate within the studies is either the same or better or just or just slightly worse on the low fat diet obviously the original statement of it being far exceeded by low fat or moderation diets is obviously incorrect but what what is the root cause of this there's just a, a study that was released today um going back to a 2003 study and seen and tracking them since then and they noted that the low carbohydrate followers had typically fallen, fallen away from the diet. Is that a failure of the diet? Is, that, is the fact that only 75% of the weight loss in that low carb Mediterranean diet um, comparison, what about the other 25%? Is that a failure of the diet that people were unable to stick with the diet? No. All diets aren't for everybody. Some people work well on a low carbohydrate diet. It works great with their taste. It works great with their taste buds. And some people don't. Does that mean that the diet is somehow worse because of the adherence rate? No. Because obviously what's most important is that it works for you. It doesn't matter if it worked for me, if it worked for that Weight Watchers worked for somebody else, or low fat worked for somebody else, or calorie counting worked for somebody else. It's what works for you. It's not what works for anybody else that matters. Is what can you adhere to and what can get you to go. That's the only thing that I care about is making that you, you as a successful um, weight loss loser as I was. So I hope this helps. I hope this reaches everyone in good health. And when, when people say that, oh, you can't stick to a low-carbohydrate diet or you can't be expected to stay on low-carb for the rest of your life, know that it worked for me. It can work for you. It's all a matter of what, of what effort that you want to do and making sure that you learn the long-term lessons as you lose the weight to make sure that you keep it off while you hit maintenance. So, hope this reaches everyone great health. Talk to you guys later. Bye.